first is one of the most crucial phases of sensor integration, sensor characterization. Sensor characterization is the process of establishing a fundamental understanding of sensor functionality in a controlled, known loading environment. This is a crucial element of the integration process for a variety of reasons displayed here. Just remember that your application is unique. Taking the time to test the sensor with various circuits, loading conditions, and your expected interface materials allows you to establish a performance baseline. When unexpected results are observed, an established performance baseline can be used to determine likely causes, isolate variables, and systematically identify the root cause of observed issues. Without sensor characterization, troubleshooting and debugging can become a costly game of guess and check. There are two core questions engineers and designers are looking to answer with sensor characterization. One, what is the fundamental performance of a FlexiForce sensor? And two, how does a FlexiForce sensor function with the circuits and material interfaces I'm considering for my application? Rather than building their own loading fixture and circuits from scratch, the design team purchased the FlexiForce Sensor Characterization Kit from the Atexcan online store. This kit was developed to help engineers understand how FlexiForce sensors will perform under different circuitry and in controlled loading environments. The desktop loading fixture includes an onboard calibrated load cell, which is an important element to characterization as it provides users with an understanding of sensor capability and performance under known loads. The kit also includes three interchangeable analog circuit modules, FlexiForce sensors, an open source software to control the fixture and record sensor data, and a universal power supply. With the characterization kit, the engineers began applying loads to a FlexiForce A301 sensor at the expected force frequency. From there, they kept record of sensor performance in the software. To their surprise, they noticed that the sensor response was very different under different circuits. For instance, the voltage divider had a much less linear output curve compared to the inverting op amp. Once they determined the best type of circuit for their application, the team tested this circuit with their application's interface materials. They used this test to initially size the reference voltage, resistor, and capacitor values within the circuit, and also to obtain a performance baseline of linearity hysteresis, drift, and repeatability with their specific circuit, components, and interface materials. After characterization comes proof of concept. Your main goal here is to determine whether the sensor can successfully capture its intended measurement with your selected electrical and mechanical configuration. A proof of concept is really just a one-off mock-up of your application using your expected interfacing materials and load concentration methods. Then you test sensor performance and determine whether you can capture the intended measurement or event of your application. What we are trying to answer here is, can I capture the intended measurement or event of my application one time? So we actually offer another development product for the proof of concept phase called the FlexiForce Prototyping Kit. This kit allows you to advance your FlexiForce embedded design through later design phases with greater efficiency. It includes a port to plug in the three circuit modules that were also included with the characterization kit. And you can either monitor feedback from the onboard LED light or from the open source software we provide. The prototyping kit also includes programmable and adjustable reference voltage. Here's the proof of concept the design team developed. As you can see, it's far from glamorous. All they really did was apply a load to a plastic tube that covered the sensor's sensing area and determine whether the output would be acceptable and repeatable for the application. One important thing to note is that load concentrator that appears on the sensor's active sensing area on the top right of the slide. These load concentrators, or pucks as we often call them at TechScan, help direct the force into the sensor's sensing area. Pucks ensure a consistent material interaction, which optimizes linearity and repeatability. 
They are also good for protecting the sensor against shear or abrasive forces that could affect the sensor's sensitivity over time. The bottom image is a look at the open source software that comes with the prototyping kit. It's a visual basic program that makes data collection and calibration easy. The Arduino software that controls the prototyping kit's PCB is also open source and can be tailored to fit the needs of your specific application. There were two key findings that came out of this proof of concept. One, the current reference voltage of the circuit was not providing enough sensitivity to capture a robust measurement. That was an easy fix though. The engineers increased the reference voltage one half volt using the jumper on the board. This increased reference voltage and provided better sensitivity and resolution in later tests. Also, the polycarbonate load concentrator was not providing the response they desired. Instead, they switched to a thinner stainless steel load concentrator and were happy with the results. After proof of concept comes prototyping, which is essentially the initial build of the device with the sensor embedded. Depending on the device, there can be multiple iterations of prototypes from more bare bones to more advanced designs. Engineers and designers in this phase are looking to answer how they're going to calibrate the sensor. How will they accommodate for sensor to sensor variation? And really, can you rely on this sensor to do what you need it to do? The diagram on the right shows the synthesis of the custom FlexiForce sensor inserted into the alpha prototype of the wearable device. Basically, the sensor is first fitted with the stainless steel load concentrator, then placed within a stainless steel holster. Everything was made to fit inside the pump housing. With the data they collected in characterization and proof of concept, the engineers developed a two-point calibration procedure. After a round of testing with the alpha prototype, the engineers developed a beta prototype with the remaining HMI components. They also incorporated their first printed circuit board for the application, which included the same parameters that the team established with the proof of concept trials. However, they began to notice that the sensor output was not repeatable with the cyclic load applied to the sensor. They initially thought the sensor was malfunctioning or not viable. But by comparing the data collected during characterization to the data collected from their prototype, the team was able to isolate the variables that could cause this deviation in repeatability and troubleshoot accordingly. They determined that the sensor was actually doing its job and it was the plastic tubing that was causing the issue. Instead, the design team developed a metal actuator that you see in number three of this diagram. The tubing was positioned above a metal pin and as expansions in the tubing occurred, the pin would apply force to the sensor. This proved to be a much better mechanical setup and saved the team quite a bit of time guessing and checking, keeping the project on schedule and on track and avoiding a full redesign. 